The coronavirus, is it from God or the devil? Part two. Hi, welcome to today's little lesson. If you're with me on our last lesson, we started talking about the coronavirus, which I'm filming this in April of 2020, and it's making headlines. It has been making headlines all over the world for you know months now. And uh, j j the United States is just beginning to cautiously kind of reopen after shutting down the schools, shutting down businesses, all non-essential services. People have been furloughed and laid off and so forth. And terrible, terrible crisis and disaster here in this country. As, as I'm talking to you, about 70,000 people have, have died in this country, about a quarter of a million around the world, and it's attributed to the coronavirus. So talk about that the last time. And so there is not a full agreement within uh, the, the body of Christ, within those who profess to believe in Jesus about the origins of the coronavirus. Is it God or is it the devil? Well, it's bad. And so that makes, makes you think, well, it must be the devil. It's bad. But, but, but wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> we got a whole Bible, you know, and we know that God is good. We also know that God is holy and God is pure and God is righteous, and God gives commandments. And when people ignore his commandments and disobey his commandments, he's slow to anger, but yet he does reveal himself as a God of wrath in the scripture. And although we do have some proof texts that are used by some of these TV evangelist guys, you know, I cited them the last time in our little lesson, you know, Jesus said, uh, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I talked about that. You know, that's actually not talking about the devil. It's talking about false teachers and religious leaders. Jesus went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed by the devil. Acts 10.38. Remember that woman who was bent over for 18 years and, and the Pharisees got mad about Jesus healing her on the Sabbath. And he said, shouldn't this woman have been released from Satan? You know, a, a daughter of Abraham that she is after 18 years. So, so you know, the devil is attributed to that. Jesus cast out devils and, and people got better and got well, okay? So there's no doubt that the devil is involved in some way, form or fashion in the whole sickness space, okay? You know, that, that's, that's biblical, but that's, that's not all the truth. And, um, you know, p people said, well, John 10 cents says, you know, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. So anything that kills or steals or destroys, that's the devil. It's a very simplistic theology. You gotta love those folks, you know, because they're sincere. And uh, but you know, you can be sincere and and, and be sincerely wrong because you just you know just didn't read enough <laughs> in the Bible. Uh, so you know, God bless those folks, and we don't want to make them feel bad, but we do want to help them to see that there's other verses in the Bible. Well. You know, the danger of pulling out proof texts, uh, that's illustrated very much by this John, the, the, uh, the common use of John 10.10. 10. Anything that kills, steals, or destroys is of the devil. Can I read to you from Matthew 10 and verse number 28? These are the words of Jesus. He said, do not fear those who kill the body, but who are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him that's a capital H, it's obviously talking about God, fear him who is able to, the next word is, destroy both soul and body in hell. And so God is credited for destroying. There's the word, destroy. He's destroying souls and bodies in hell. Look it up yourself, Matthew 10, 28. Let me read to you from Luke chapter 12 and verse number five. Very similar statement by the Lord Jesus. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear the one who after he has killed. Well, is he, is he, is he, is he talking about the devil there? After he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him, capital H, okay? Jesus is not talking about the devil in that verse and fear the devil. Fear God, because after he has killed, so God can kill. And if you've read the Bible, you know, one time, you've read scores of stories, you know, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, if you get all the way into Revelation, well, actually you can stop off in Acts, Ananias and Sapphira fall dead for, for lying, you know, about their contribution in the book of Acts, right? Well, you think it was the devil that killed them? You know, was the devil angry that they sinned? 
<laughs> you know, the devil would be like inspiring them to sin. He, he, he's, he's the tempter. You know, again, we're just reading from the Bible. Okay, Revelation. God's going all kind of people through all these plagues that have their origin. In the Old Testament, I mean, oh my goodness, God is not ashamed or embarrassed in the least to be taken credit for killing lots and lots of people. Okay, so you just don't want to take John 10.10 10 and say, well, anything that kills or steals or destroys, that's the devil. Okay, here's uh, James. James, an apostle of the Lord, wrote the book of James. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save, isn't that great? We love our Savior, the one who's able to save, and guess what the next word is? You guessed it, destroy. So the same God that's saving, it's also the God who the Bible says is destroying. So you can't say everything that kills, steals, and destroys is the devil. All right, one more. And we could, we could spend hours. One more. This is from Jude. Now I desire to remind you that the Lord, after saving a people out of the land of Egypt, there he's the Savior in that wonderful, he saved the Israelites out of Egypt, delivered them from slavery. Subsequently, guess what the next word is? Destroyed those who did not believe. Jude verse 5. So God's the Savior and the Destroyer. It's all in one verse. Okay, so, so now, does, the, does God sometimes use the devil in his sovereign purposes to wreak havoc and to destroy or to put sickness on people? Well, to think about this. Think about the story of Job. You know, a lot of mystery there, but... God says to the devil, have you considered my servant Job? There's nobody like him on the earth, fearing me and turning away from evil. And Job says, well, yeah, it's all because of you bless him so much. Take away those blessings. The God says, all right, give it your best shot, buddy. And the devil begins to afflict him. And one of those afflictions is sickness. So the devil couldn't do anything until God allowed him. Uh, so yeah, so sure, you know, the devil, you can say the devil's behind sickness. So now we're talking about the coronavirus. Well, it, it might be, you can say, well, it's the devil, but is the devil operating unilaterally? You know, is he like able to do whatever he wants? Not according to the Bible. See, so I think the most uh, natural way to, to interpret the coronavirus if you want to give the devil some, some credit there, okay, fine. But, but could it be that God is trying to send an, yet another message to the people of the world that you need to repent and, and start loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and loving your neighbor as yourself, you know? Is there, could that be it? Seeing as how that's like in the Bible from the beginning to the end? <laughs> I think so. Okay, well, I guess we're going to go into part three on this little series about the coronavirus, so I'm out of time for today. One of the best things going on this planet, and I can tell you it's not the devil behind it, it's God's behind it, is a ministry called Heaven's Family. Take a look at our website to find out how you can get involved in something every Christian should be involved in, that's caring for the least of these. And they're all over the world, and Heaven's Family's reaching out to them. Uh, heaven, the letter S, family, heavensfamily.org. Okay, looking forward to our next time together. God bless you.